All right. Hello, everybody. Um, Deb Hoffman here. And I am so excited about this new BOGO in the new wrap deal to get people signed up as distributors. And I have this fabulous lady on that's going to help inspire us and tell us your story. I adore Amy Spence. She is one of the sweetest, kindest, most generous people in the world. So her paycheck is not at all affected by us. And she's doing this as a gift to me. Um, and she is a massive enroller. She's Ambassador Diamond. And she has an amazing story. I love to hear about your daughter. And so I'm just going to let Amy tell a little bit about her story. And then we're going to go from there. I'm going to keep it kind of open. Um, eventually, after Amy talks a little bit, I'm going to let you ask some questions. I know that Michaela Snyder has got some really exciting things going on. I know a lot of you do this with this BOGO um, wraps in the new distributor kits. Let's talk about you know some of that stuff. So if you're popping on, mute yourselves because your person here can't figure it out. I'm old. That's the way it goes. Just get used to it. Um, so mute yourselves, please, everybody, or be extra quiet. And I'm going to throw it to Amy and let her tell her story a little bit, okay? Thank you, Deb, for having me on. You made me blush. Um, I, you guys, first of all, I just want to say you have a great leader here. She is one of my absolute favorites. I fell in love with her on the cruise um, so of last year, and that just goes to show you, if you guys aren't ready to get on that cruise, you have how many more days, uh, 11 more days to get not or to get your cruise points. But that cruise was amazing for me. I was an ambassador diamond, but just the way that I connected with everybody. And I'm not, y'all, I'm really not a mean person, but will you please mute yourself? Because I get so sidetracked. I have like a million thoughts going on in my head. And if I hear any background noise, my team, that's the first thing I do is mute all of them. Um, anyways, so you guys have a wonderful, wonderful leader um, in Deb. And I just want you guys to know how lucky you are to have her. She loves you guys. And I know and I can tell when leaders pour into their teams. And she is one of them. So you guys are really lucky. But like she said, my name is Amy Spence. I am an ambassador diamond. I've been in the business for two and a half years. And I was a high school guidance counselor when I started. Um, at the time, my husband was a teacher, and we were we had a little girl who was two years old, and she was born with a very rare genetic disorder called PKU. And for those of you that don't know what PKU is, it um, basically Caroline's body cannot break down um, one of the amino acids and protein, and this amino acid is found in everything from vegetables, fruit me everything so she is on a very strict strict diet we have to weigh out all of her food every time she eats like today we were at the pool and I ordered her french fries and carrots and I had to bring my travel scale to weigh everything out but not only that she's on very um, I have to order expensive metabolic formula and metabolic food and so um, not all of her food is metabolic but you know there are some things that I either don't want to cook or you can't cook and like like pasta you know and her pasta is like $14 for a thing of noodles like that would cost like you know a dollar 99 at our store two ninety nine at our grocery store so it's very expensive so as you guys know um, teachers do not make a lot of money and we were actually in medical or we were in student loan debt for my master's but we weren't in debt with like credit cards or anything we, we lived in a three-bedroom house it was our starter home we envisioned bringing home our baby to this house and um, you know saving up and moving out but then when Caroline was born with all these added, added medical expenses I did not know um, how we we were going to afford another child. I remember telling my husband, you know, I want baby number two. And he said, you know, I don't, I just don't know how we're going to, we're going to be able to afford that with Caroline's bills and our student loan payments. And I remember, um, just laying in bed one night thinking to myself, how are we ever going to get ahead? I had no idea how that was going to happen because like I said, we were both Teachers, we loved what we did. My husband had three degrees. He was going to one day try to be a principal, but he didn't know when that was going to happen. And um, I had my master's. And we were both doing what we loved. 
So I had watched Ali Antonacci for about six months, and I watched It Works kind of change into her life. So this is one of my main things that I point out in my story. Um, I met Ali six months prior to when I joined, and she followed up with me, y'all. I mean, we created the doc, or she created a document once I signed and sent it to me of all the messages she sent me, and it was like four or five pages in Microsoft Word of messages that she sent me, and every time she asked about my family, or like how volleyball was going, because I was also the head volleyball coach, um, and basketball coach, every time she asked me about those things, I would respond to her. But then, of course, she would bring up it works, and I wouldn't respond at all. I thought she was crazy. I thought she was absolutely loony, but there was a part of me that didn't want to unfollow her. I didn't want to unfriend her, even though I could have, because we didn't really know each other. We met one night in St. Louis when I was visiting some friends. And so I finally reached out to her that night that I just was like, what, something's got to change. And I was like, I want to do this. So I did, I made the choice to sign up. And, um, I honestly, from that day forward, I didn't look back. I've never really been a person who cared about what other people thought of me, but I will be completely honest with you guys. I was worried and nervous. Um, I also was worried and nervous because I was busy. I was a mom of a little girl who required extra steps. I had to meal plan her or prep her meals every single day the night before for that, you know, for her to go to daycare. Um, my husband was a football coach. I was a volleyball coach. I was a basketball coach, high school guidance counselor. I just was very busy. Um, so I was really worried how I was going to do this. And also, people did, you know, make fun of me when I first joined. They would just ask me, like, why are you doing this? You have a career that you're good at. You have a career that you love. And I just kept going. And so I made a decision on February 2nd when I signed up that I was going to give this three months, and I wasn't going to care what anyone said, and I was going to do everything my enroller told me to do. Because this is the thing. Your enroller knows what they're doing. 98% of the time, okay? There are 2%, you know, out there that just enroll people and may not know what they're doing. But 98% of the time, your enroller knows what you're doing. And, or your diamond upline knows what they're doing. You've got to do the things that they tell you to do. Allie told me that number one thing I had to do is be consistent. And to this day, after three years, or almost three years of enrolling people and building my team, I can almost pinpoint the people that aren't going to get where they want to in this business because after a couple days, they stop posting or they stop doing the things that I tell them to do. And so at that point, you know, I, of course, will not give up on them, but I move on because you, bottom line is you can't make someone want this business. You can't make somebody want to work as hard as you. Um, I will always keep up with them. I will always touch base with them, but it's never going to be, I'm not going to try to, you know, message them every single day and try to make them want this as bad as I do. So what I do is I'm always looking for my next person. Um, when I joined, I did not take no for an answer. When somebody would tell me no, I would put them on a list and I would follow up with them continuously. People unfriended me on Facebook and I would message those people and I would say, you know, I really hate you that you unfriended me because of my post. There's an unfollow button. And they would say, yeah, you're, you know, you're just annoying. And I'm like, well, why, how am I annoying to trying to make a better life for my family? And I told people that, and I told, I, I think that's one of the reasons that I was so looking back so successful and still to this day am is because I always stand up for myself and my family because those are the most important people in my life. And those, that, that at the time was my why. And your why changes in this business so much, but I always tell my team that you have to keep, you have to have a why, first of all, but you also have to have three things that you're confident about. And if you're not confident about one of those three things, you will not be successful in this business. And one, the first thing is yourself, our products, and the company. And you've got to choose one of those things. And I'm finally in the position where I'm confident in all three, but it wasn't always that way, y'all. When I joined, I had never even tried one single product. I didn't join for the products, but do you know what? 
I enrolled 25 loyal customers my first month. And people ask me all the time, how do you, how did you enroll 25 loyal customers your first month when you had never even tried to wrap? And I said it was simple. I just went, I just didn't take no. I just kept going. I talked to every teacher in my building. I talked to every person I came in contact with. I, I wrote out a hundreds list. I got out my old high school yearbook and started friending people. I um, immediately, when I joined in February, there was like a President's Day like craft fair in my town. And I called up the craft fair, the person who was head of it in Columbia, Missouri. And I was like, hey, can I set up a table for it works? And they're like, sure. I didn't have to pay anything. And I set up a table and I, you know, passed out. I didn't even have blitz cards. I didn't even buy my first t-shirt until I was triple diamond. I mean, I just went, went, went and didn't stop. And so that's, you know, and I'm not saying you have to work at that pace, but this business loves urgency. And a lot of people tell me, well, you know, I have kids, I have a husband, I have other obligations. I did too. And that's why I just, you know, I don't, I have a no excuse attitude with my team and they know that it's not that I don't empathize with people. It's not that I'm not compassionate with people, but looking back at my life, if I could do it, I know anyone can. And, um, it's not like I had tons of a huge network when I joined. It's nothing like that. It's just, I wanted this so badly and I saw the vision. And so that's when I'm enrolling someone, I really, really get to know why they want this business to work. And I'm unlike a lot of people in this company, but I get on the phone with my distributors. I talk to my distributors on the phone um, probably a couple times a week. And I know, you know, it's, it's time consuming, but at the same time, I have to build that relationship. And still to this day, the five people on my top line who got me to Ambassador Diamond are still working this business. Um, a lot of them are presidential. Some of them are triples. I have two personally enrolled ambassadors. But I really believe just that unity that I have formed with my distributors from day one has helped my team. So I know a lot of people don't like to talk on the phone, and that is great. You have to really find out what works for you. Um, but another thing is, so when I joined in February, and I'm all over the place, Deb, if you want to interrupt me, go ahead. But when I joined in February, I obviously, my why was Caroline and Steve, and I wanted another baby so badly. So I joined in February. In May, I promoted to, I, I double promoted put it in May to double diamond. And um, I also that month found out at the beginning of the month, but I still double promoted. I found out that I was going through infertility. So basically I was 29 at the time. Yeah. 29 at the time um, going through menopause. So the reason that I joined was to, you know, to pay off our medical debt and stuff and also to have another baby because Steve and I had that chance of having another baby with PKU. So we knew it would just be at an expense. So I took that time in May, I found that out in May and I literally looked in the mirror and I was like, I have two choices. I can sit here and let this eat me up inside or I can sit here and go for this and get to Ambassador Diamond as quick as I can because that's going to unlock the compensation plan and that's going to um, provide Steve and I a way to one day maybe look into a option or infertility treatments because y'all infertility is so expensive and I mean there's 23 of y'all on tonight statistics say that one in eight people have infertility issues so there's two of y'all maybe on tonight or one other person besides me yeah I see someone raising their hand and so that's what drove me and I remember having a conversation with Steve and I remember talking to him and saying that there's going to be a lot of long nights. There's going to be a lot of um, sacrifices. I didn't put Caroline to sleep every single night. I didn't go out with my friends when, you know, when they asked us to. Um, I stopped watching TV. I have not watched a TV show in two and a half years. In fact, I try to watch The Bachelorette, but I can't, re I can't relax enough to watch it because it's like that's time that I could be working my business. Um, I, I mean, every now and then, I, I do have one guilty pleasure, Southern Charm. I don't know if y'all know what it is, but it's on Bravo. My husband and I love it. Anyways. 
So that is my one TV show. But I promoted, so I promoted to Triple Diamond in June, the month after. Um, and then I didn't promote in July and August, but promoted in September to Presidential Diamond. And then I remember going to conference in January and that he gave, he, um, Mark, or, you know, promote, or did the double good bonuses. Um, am I breaking up? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. I'm frozen, but I'm broken up. Okay. Yeah. That's a beautiful frozen look I got going on. <laughs> um, but he decided to uh, bring out the double goods. And um, there. Okay, right. there we go. Okay, he brought the double goods, and I remember looking at Kayla, and Kayla was my very best friend from college, and we, she was my very first distributor um, in February. She signed up two weeks after me, and I remember looking at her, and I said, how many distributors do you need to get to ambassador? Because you always should know, y'all. You always should know your charts. I don't care if you're Ruby. I don't care if you're Emerald. I don't care if you're Diamond. You need to know the people underneath them. And as you get, as you get, you know, you go to Diamond, just know that there's someone in that chart that could get you to the next promotion that you don't know. So you, that's why it's so good to know your charts. Um, in fact, I trust everyone on my team. I know that's crazy, but I would carry around this many paper charts. And I knew everyone. I mean, I remember Chantel being like, that is, that's insane. But I mean, that's just, that worked for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people call me controlling. I'm really not though. Like if you really know me, but I think that I wanted this so badly that maybe I was a little controlling um, in that aspect. But anyways, I, I, I needed 96 distributors to go ambassador in January. Yeah, January. And Kayla needed um, 126, I think. I know hers was in the 120s. And we both went ambassador in March. Um, I did two shows in January with um, a triple diamond on my team. And from one show alone, her and I booked 36 parties. So I had 36 parties. Um, from January to to March, um, and that's kind of how I, I mean, and I went, and I worked too, y'all. I didn't quit my job that school year. I was a triple diamond, and I had already signed my contract, and for me, those students were my life, and so I just could not go to school in June and be like, I quit my job, and we were not in the financial position. We had not paid all of our debt, and so Steve, you know, did not want me to quit, so I worked as an ambassador diamond all the way until the end of the school year in July. Um, so I worked while I was going ambassador. And I started that volleyball program, so I was the volleyball coach as well, dealing with it, all my infertility treatments three hours away. So there's really no excuse, and that's why it's hard for me sometimes. Um, I think people, when they, have, when they give you excuse after excuse, they just don't want it. But that doesn't mean that they don't want it right now. It just means y'all need to put them away. And if you can take anything from this Zoom, is your job, I had a fellow Ambassador Diamond tell me this, my job every single day is to wake up and tell as many people as you can about It Works. As many people at Target, on Facebook, on Instagram, at your work, wherever you are, at the pool. Today I was blitzing, I just had an It Works hat on and people were asking me about it. So that is your job every day. But know that they're not gonna join you They're not going to join you that first time you tell them, y'all. They're just not going to. It's very rare that I have somebody who I talk to for the first time and they join me. That's why you need to keep up with everybody. You need to have lists. You need to have notebooks. And you just need to follow up, follow up, follow up. And just know that you're in a network marketing business. So if you're not adding people to your network daily, you're not not doing your job. And so that's something that you've got to think about when you're out and about or when you're, you know, adding on social media or when you're any situation that you're in. You know, I've stopped paying gas at the pump. I now walk inside to get Caroline and I walk inside and we go and talk to the um, cashier and the attendant. Sure. Okay, sorry, my, my ADHD is kicking in. It's like an echo. Your voice is echo. There, is that better? Try that. There, is that better? Oh, oh, hey, Deb, is your cell phone here? Your, 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 yeah. 
Is that, that it? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll mute my end. Okay. Mute my end. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. I'm so echoey. I'm so echoey. Let me throw myself on the computer. Let me throw myself on the computer. Is that better? Better? I don't know. I think it's still echoing. I think it's still echoing. I don't know what to do. Hold on, let me just. I don't know what to do. Hold on, let me just. What made it start all of a sudden? Because it was great. What made it start all of a sudden? Because it was great. <sighs> I think we all are echoing. I think we all are echoing. This happened on my Zoom. Does anyone want to have a phone and a computer on? Yeah, that's what it is. It's when, like, the phone, if there's a phone, okay, it sounds better. Maybe somebody had their phone on, too. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you for one second because I'm going to tell you a, say a couple of things about you. Um, first of all, like she had mentioned that we met um, at, on the cruise. I like physically met you, but I felt like I knew you um, just because of your face. I had followed your Facebook pages um, just because you're so cute. And I just was like, she's so darling. And I just followed her. And so how it happened was we were on the cruise. I had on this way too short um, swimsuit cover up. We were been out of the pool and we were on the cruise and you know, the weather was not great. The weather was really pretty bad. And so we had been out by the pool. We came in cause it was going to rain or whatever. We were sitting, some of our team all in this big group and we were getting ready to go for dinner. And somebody said, we're there. You guys were having a get together. Come on into this meeting room. So I went in and Chantel said, you have to come up, Deb, and you have to, you talk at this. And I was like, oh, me? First of all, I'm in this way too short swimsuit cover up and me, I can't do it. But you know who made me feel like I could? Amy Spence. I oh, looked you at the very end of that line and I looked down at you and you like made eye contact with me and I was like, I can do this because the thing about Amy Spence is um, she, you may not remember what she says and you've probably heard this before, but she, you will know and remember how she makes you feel. And that's why people join your team. I feel like because you make people feel so important and that's a key component to um selling sharing what you've got because that's what we all can learn from this is that you have the passion you are excited and you can tell that you are genuinely wanting this for that person you're talking to so like for me at that moment i was like she's got my back she knows that that i'm scared and I needed her luck. And so to me, you let me know that I was important and that you, it just made me feel so much better. Okay. Oh, you're going to make me cry. It's so true though. It's so true. And I feel like that's such a big component of this. Like you, when you talk like this, it just makes me, I want everybody to see and feel why you're successful is what you're doing right there is you're just sharing and pouring out your heart about something you totally believe in. So people say to me, well, I'm not a salesperson. Yep. I'm not either. I've been in this business three years. I am a nurse. I've never yet to this day sold a thing because I truly don't think I can sell a thing. If you think you're selling something, you're not going to probably be successful, but sharing your heart like Amy Spence is doing and caring about people and being genuine, that will take you far. And I think also like from day one that I've started, this business helped me. I mean, from, you know, my first rap party getting rap cash. I mean, I looked at that, like that's $60 I didn't have. Uh, you know, my first paycheck was 150 bucks and I remember running out and being so excited. And at the time my husband was like, Mm. because see this is the thing he jokes because he says Amy the, the three things in life that you haven't given up on are it works marriage 
and being a mom because I'm the queen, the queen of starting stuff. Like I'm going to go become a pure bar fanatic and go to pure bar every day, or I'm going to go run a half marathon and then I give up. I mean, it's just like, even though I'm really going to do that, but, um, cause I just announced that a couple weeks ago. Anyways, just I, every workout video from an info commercial I would buy and I would like insanity and P90X, I would buy all that stuff and then I would quit. But with it works, it was different. And I think it's because what I tell my team is this is why you don't give up on people is because this is my counseling background coming out. But every six months, a person goes through a change. Okay. So it can be something as small as a new job, an engagement, um, having a kid, having a miscarriage, getting a divorce, whatever it is, someone goes through a change in their life every six months. So just because they told you no six months ago does not mean that they are not ready to join. Um, it is crazy to me as I'm doing my follow-ups, the people that I've missed, like today, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't been able to really get a lot of sleep the past two days because I've been wanting to enroll people and talk about this awesome promotion, but um, today I reached out to someone that I guess just slipped my mind. Like she went to college with me. She messaged me about a month ago. We talked back and forth. She was like, I'm just not ready. And usually I don't wait a month before I talk to somebody. So it was like five weeks and I messaged her today and I was like, hey Jenna, I just still think that you know you'd be great at this, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, I just signed up last week because, you know, someone reached out to me. So Jade Hooper said on stage, and this stuck with me, she said on stage, she's like, you want to be the first person to talk to somebody and you want to be the last. So if you guys don't have a system in place, you're probably letting a lot of people slip through the cracks. So don't be like me, you know, who've had to, who I've had to learn the hard way over the last two and a half years. You know, just a couple weeks ago, I was talking to another investor, I'm, and I went and I bought a um, big old desk calendar because a lot of people do stuff on their phone. I'm a more paper to pen girl, and so I needed something that I was going to see every day. And so this desk calendar, I wish I could show it to you guys right now, but it just like is filled with people like that I've talked to, people to follow up with. I put in parentheses where I found them. And then I will like set when I need to follow up with them. So I always know what I need to do that day. And that's what I did in school. Um, I will tell you guys, how many of y'all work full time? Raise your hand. Did, I used to, not anymore, but a lot right. of people, yeah. Well, I'm jealous of y'all, and I'm gonna be honest. I am so jealous of y'all because I got, and this is complete honesty right here, very transparent. I got more done for this business working full time than I have since I've been with my daughter for the past year. And I've had a lot of come to Jesus moments with Pam, with, you know, Mike, with, you know, my upline, Bonnie Altrudo and Ali Antonacci. And it's just like, I kind of like for the last year, I feel like I've wasted because I finally got to be home with my daughter. And um, to me, I want to savor every minute, but I forgot that I'm also a work at home mom. And so I've wasted a lot of time. Um, and so, you know, hiring a part-time nanny has been like a huge, like gut wrench because I don't want to do it. But at the same time, like I know that I have to. So I really do though. I was joking with my husband. I was like, I need to, I need to go back and be a guidance counselor again. He's like, why? And I'm like, well, I'd get more done with it works, but I really would. So those of you working full time, see that as a benefit that you have to juggle your time because honestly, you only need two hours a day to work this business. And it is so true. But when you are working it, it needs to be closed off space. Because you can work it in every aspect of your life when you're out to dinner with your husband, when you're at the ballpark, when you're swimming and just make that just, that's just a part of your life. But as far as like working, sitting down at the computer, you know, all you need is like two, an hour and a half to two hours a, a day to do that, or not even an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, looking back when I was working this business, I was staying up to one and two in the morning and like really that wasn't necessary. In my head that was necessary, but it really wasn't necessary. 
So I, I working with intention, I feel like, and like yes. you said, cause I promoted to triple diamond working at an office that we had, we could not have Facebook on our computer and we could not access our phone. So I, when I would go into the bathroom, I would look at my phone and I would message back. And that's so key because that's why I limited my return messages to a few words because I had a few words. I had tinkle time. That's all I had to message someone back. So I couldn't overload them with verbiage because I did not have time. And I promoted to Triple Diamond. So that to me, like you said, is totally, totally an excuse. And I, I feel like I was way more productive um, with my business. Now I feel like I'm working more management mode and it's not as productive you know maybe no, it's helping other people but i just didn't have the time before and um yeah another thing that i was going to say to you when you said that about being you met i mean you enrolled with an acquaintance i think that's so key that um i think it was cammy dempsey said from stage that she talked about kyler and he said i encourage all of my people to look at their yearbooks and go back to clubs that they joined and think about people that you just incidentally met, find them on Facebook, develop that relationship and go from there. Everybody thinks it has to be your own warm market or specific people, but somebody's going to come into your life that needs this business. And the, also from the, what they said from stage is if you don't ask them, someone's going to, mm -hmm. you're going to miss out. And so like what you were just saying, if you had written it down and with intention followed up yeah. in five days or whatever we normally tell you to do, you would have probably got that gal. Yeah. And, and that wasn't the only gal that I let slip there. Looking back this past year, I've let a lot slip just because of my lack of intention with my time. That's all it is. Yeah. Another thing that I was going to tell you is that um, Deb said earlier that I was this massive, massive enroller, and I'm really not. I've had one crazy month in my whole entire three years where I, I've enrolled 23 distributors, and y'all, that is like insane. I, I don't even, I don't like months like that. I'll be completely honest. I do not like it one bit. I let so many of those girls and so many potential, so much potential, but I couldn't give them what I, what I, how I usually train because there's 23, there was 23 of them that a lot fell through the cracks. But anyways, I'm a steps to success girl. I am literally three to five distributors a month and then four loyal customers. But here's the thing. Like I am teaching my team to do that. And you got to think about when you're enrolling new distributors, this is what, this is a tip that I give people. And I, it seems to every zoom I've been on, I've given this tip and I've had people tell me, Oh my gosh, it's been, that's worked so awesome for our team. Um, but I immediately from day one, I enroll somebody and I say, okay, you have 24 hours to get your four loyal customers and, and, and then give me a list of five or six people that you think are going to be good loyal customers. And then they'll, t they'll talk to me about these people and then I will help them come up with things to message to this person, not message on Facebook, but to text message them because you are your first few loyal customers should be those people that are in your, like, you know, your corner, those people that are going to, you know, come to you when you meet somebody. Um, and I truly believe that, but I think we're so afraid to talk to those people, especially someone starting out in this. They're shy. That's how I was. I mean, my own sister still hasn't even ordered products from me. Her husband has, but she hasn't. I mean, so, but I I've never asked her. My brother-in-law is the one that contacted me. I've never asked my sister. I'm, it's been almost two and a half years. I've never asked her, but that's just another story. Um, so no, I love my sister, but she's just whatever. Yeah. But then I'm like, okay, you also have 24 hours to, or I, sometimes I do 48 hours. I said, you need to set up three phone calls with three different people who you want to work with, who you think would be great distributors. And you need to get them on the phone with me because think about it. I was a loyal customer enrolling machine. I signed up Kayla in February and then my second distributor didn't come until five weeks later, Lindsay Bishop. Mm -hmm. So then after her, I only signed up like two in March. I think I signed up three in March. But we did this. This is what we did. I don't, we didn't know what we were doing, but we've always done it this way. We would always get on the phone with each other's potentials. And 
I just look at it this way. I've been in this business for ten and a half years. I know what to say to someone. Whereas someone may have their phone near their computer. That's so weird. Um, so I that's what I do. And I had a girl, this is just shows you how well this works. I, my last distributor, well, I signed up one yesterday, but my, my one before her signed up two weeks ago um, when we were at the lake, July 12th weekend. I think that's what it was. Um, July, wait, where are we at? July 18th. Does that take a lot of time on me? No, she's got volume. She's got volume. She, they're all enrolling. Like she has five loyal customers and then each of her distributors have like one or two. So yeah, she may not go Ruby this month, but the fact that it's because I got on the phone with these people and we had no idea what she was doing, but she was following my lead. So not only was I talking to people, but I was also trying so I literally knocked two birds out with one stone. So now I did that for three people and they enrolled. She signed up her other two without me talking on the phone with them. And I was like, well, how'd you do it? And she's like, well, I just said what you said. I mean, so I don't have to worry about her anymore. She knows to post, she knows what to say to low customers and she knows how to talk to distributors. So challenge them, y'all, because if they get a homework assignment within the first 24 hours, they're so excited and so high on life because they are excited about joining 98% of the time. Then you can celebrate that success with them and hopefully get someone enrolled in like their first three or four days. Okay, I'm gonna mute everybody and then I'm gonna have you unmute because I figured it out. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everybody and then you unmute, Amy. Okay. Okay, now, can you? Okay, I'm going to it. Yes. Okay. Yay! All right, finally, about 30 minutes in. Um, oh, when you said that, that is so key because I said the same thing today to my distributor I, that I was talking to. I said, get me on a conference call because it, it just gives you more confidence to have somebody else there. And then, like you say, they hear it and then it, it makes more sense and it, it it's easier for them to, to say it out loud. So that is such a good tip. Such yeah. a good tip. And, and I do that with every single person. And honestly, it also makes you realize who's serious about it. Because if they, if they don't set up at least one call within 48 hours, because this is what they're going to do. They're going to go to their best friend and just be like, hey, look, I just joined this amazing um, opportunity. Will you give me 20 minutes of your time? I'm really excited about this. There's no pressure. Just hop on the phone with my enroller so you can kind of hear what I'm doing. Right. People don't want them to give them any like information because they don't really know what they're talking about right away. Right. So that's when I hop on the phone with them and I get to know them and all that. But I've been doing this for, I mean, we've all been doing this for like over a year. I mean, um, year and a half. And I've always done it in the beginning to some degree. But after I went ambassador, I was like, this is how I'm going to enroll people. I mean, for my 2.0, this is how I'm going to, you know, go quickly. And, you know, I'm a diamond on my 2.0. I'm, I'm built for triple, but the volume's not there. Um, but that's how I grew my 2.0 so quickly. And I said to the gals tonight, too, if let's say I'm your um, boss, if your boss said to you, I'm going to I want you to set up two phone conference calls and I'll get on with you, you would do it. So, yeah. you know, especially when you when people first get started, a tap into the fact that they're excited. You want to do that. And B, let me tell you what to do because they're excited, but they don't know what to do. So here's a list. Like you said, get your first four little customers in, in 24 hours and set up two conference calls and I'll get on with you. That's all you have to do. That is simple. You, we have to show people how simple this is and that we're there to help them. So that is amazing tip. Yeah. Back about the cruise when we were all standing there. So what do you think there was 15 of us probably presidential mm -hmm. and um, above. Yeah. And we were just kind of sharing our hearts and that kind of stuff. And um, as I stood there, and okay, so I did not really, I mean, I know Chantel, 
I knew who you were and adored you. And I, I knew a lot of people's faces, but I didn't think people knew who I was. And as I stood there, I mean, I, I cried some because it's like so outside my comfort zone. I had this, like I said, silly swimsuit cover up that was too short. And I'm like, what in the world am I doing out here? Um, and as I stood there and we had a, ever all of us had a tip or an aha moment at the very end, what mine was, what came to me all of a sudden, and I've said it a thousand times since then, they're going to join for the money or they're going to join for what they think it can do for their life that way. But what they're going to stay for is the friendships. And mm -hmm. when I said that out loud, I was like, it, like the angels were singing because I thought, look, I, I adore Amy Spence. I knew Chantel. I stood next to Lauren Cosmatis. I, all these people, Stacey Dennis was there, all these people that I knew, but it didn't know. And I feel like they're my friends now. And that is such a great thing in this world where all kinds of horrible things are happening. Look at the people that we have right here that I can call Amy Spence and say to her, this isn't going to make you any money, but will you give me an hour of your time for my team? And she did it. You're going to stay for these friendships because in the long run, that's what's really going to make you sleep better at night is because you're going to have people no, and have your back. Exactly right. I think um, I have so many diamonds and double diamonds, even triple diamonds. I've lost rank. Um, and they were with us from the very beginning, Kayla and Lindsay and I, and they still to this day have not quit. Um, I mean, they, I have a double diamond whose rank right now is Ruby and she still has not quit and she never will y'all because she is so loyal to us because it's, it's the time that I've put in, we've put into her and like getting to know her and care about her. And I'm not saying go spend an hour on the phone with your team, but you've got to know it. You've got to really believe that you guys are working together to change all of y'all's lives. Um, because I'll tell you this, I had a phone, if any of y'all were at green carpet, you heard me say this, but I was enrolling. I've never not enrolled people, but people weren't doing anything after I went ambassador. And we had just moved to Springfield. So this was a year ago th this month. And I reached out to Pam Souter and, um, she, I, you know, did a coaching call with her. Cause when you go ambassador, you can get on the phone with her and she'll talk to you for three hours if you need her to. And, um, I just told her how I was feeling and I was like, just people are not, people aren't doing anything. And she's like, well, what are you doing, Amy? And I'm like, well, I'm enrolling people. I'm completing my steps to success. And she was like, but what are you doing? Are you just enrolling people and then throwing them out there? Are you, what are you doing? And she, she, I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. And I'm not, I was enrolling them. I was adding them on our team page and I was literally just taking a breather. I don't know if it was because, of you know, just promoting all the energy I put into it or the move. I don't know what it was, but I did that for a couple months. And she flat out was like, stop being a dud. Don't be a dud. Go write down what you want out of your team members. Like, so we, so, and I, I challenge y'all to do that. This sounds really cheesy, but I, ever since that conversation, I've been a big visualizer and things are starting to come true, y'all, from a year ago that I wrote down after she told me to do this, but she told me to do two things. She told me to write down on a legal pad of paper what I want my day to look like. So what do I really want my day to look like? When I wake up to the time I go to bed, what do I want my life to look like in 15 to 20 years? And then she told me to get out a legal piece of paper and pad and write down the attributes that I want my team members to have. So those people that I'm enrolling, what do I want them to have? You know, some of the things were motivation and um, honesty and, you know, dedication, just, you know, hard work or hard work ethic. And I looked at every single trait and she was like, until you are acting like all of that you wrote down, you're not going to attract people like that in your business. So for instance, I want distributors who want to talk, who are going to talk about it works all day long to people that they come in contact with. But if I'm not doing it, why is my team going to do this? I want so I want my team to enroll loyal customers. But if I'm not enrolling loyal customers and not showing them, why should they? Because I'm their leader and all of you guys are leaders because I believe that all of you guys have at least one distributor and one customer. And I always tell my team, you become a leader the day you sign up a loyal customer. 
That is your team right there. Because I cannot tell y'all how many loyal customers I've conferred, Kayla and I have converted to distributors. That is my game right there because I give them the best loyal customer treatment. I mean, if they're not happy, I try to make it better. I check in with them a couple times a month. I mean, it is legit what I do for my loyal customers and they've always been happy and most of them convert to a distributor at the end of their three months. So that's awesome. And I feel like yeah. that's, you know, so much of it is, um, I love what you're speaking about because it's simple. It's stuff that everybody can do. It's not like you're reinventing the wheel. You're not recreating new things. You're not making things that are impossible to do. You're doing the simple things. You're making it, you're cutting it down into simple pieces. Yes. Do this. This will work. And but celebrate all this and celebrate all the successes, Deb. Like every time you sign a loyal customer on, you should be tagging them on Facebook. And if they don't want you to tag them, then you need to like put their name and just say, I just welcomed Tammy on my team today. She ordered the cleanse. Right. Every time you get a paycheck from It Works, you need to like show show them what you're using your paycheck for. And I still to this day do relatable stuff because I always talk about when I order my daughter's food or when I pay for a medical bill or even when I get my nails done because getting my nails done y'all was not in the cards for me because it was expensive. Mm -hmm. So just the little things that you can celebrate because I'll be honest, I have moved into a beautiful home now. Um, you know, we, my husband just got a brand new big old truck and he didn't just get it for it works. My husband still works. He's an assistant principal and an athletic director and he does not work with me in this business. He supports me, but doesn't work. And that's okay. He's never been able to come to a corporate event because of his schedule, but he's living his dream. And I would never, ever want to take that away from him. Um, but I don't, just for my purpose, I don't post a lot about like what these big old things that I've bought. Yeah, whenever I go on vacation, I post about that. But the average person cannot relate to the lifestyle I'm living right now. They just can't. Like, and so I still want to be relatable. So don't think that just because you're not a presidential diamond or you're an ambassador diamond that people don't want to join your team. Because honestly, where I am, I don't even tell people the rank that I'm at unless they ask me or unless we get to that point in the conversation. And that also changed my business. Because even if you're a double diamond and you're saying you make four or $5,000 a month, people think that you're crazy. So I always tell people that I joined for $500 and now this is my full-time job. And until they ask me, you know, well, where or do you fall on this income chart? I don't really tell them anymore because I feel like people thought that I was crazy when I would tell them that. So, and it's so far, so far fetched that oh, people are so like, far. Like, I can't do that, so I just give up, like, before I even get started, because I can't do that. And I, I agree. I totally agree with that. Like you say, tell them, be relatable. Like, why did, I in, why did I enroll? And for me, that's so crazy, because I didn't enroll for the money. I mean, gosh, you know, of course the money is great. I was just being nice. And I say that to people. I'm like, you know what? It, all I was doing was holding a spot. And then I realized, gosh, I'm glad I have this spot, because if I hadn't, if I hadn't done that, then where would I be and what would I have done? And yeah. make it so that, and, and like I said, I didn't do anything for two months. And then I talked to, finally opened my mouth and spoke to somebody and they're like, well, I want to do that. And I was like, what do you mean you want to do that? I mean, so completely taken back. So being transparent is so key. And I think to your um, posts on Facebook, and that's why I love you so much, is that you show yourself, you show your little girl, you show what real life looks like and people stop to look at your posts um, and you make it so that that it seems like real life not like the so far-fetched and even like that you said if they really knew it'd be like oh my gosh that's too much but honestly I probably can be like Amy Spence I really think I can do that yeah because for me like the reason I decided I wanted to join Allie was not because she was getting out of debt or she was she was buying new things. It was because she could walk away. I was like, wow, she just walked away from her job to spend every day with her daughter. Like, okay, this is, this is the real deal. Like, I want a part of this. And so, like, what I also want to say, I know that it's, we're getting close to, like, an hour, but what I do want to say real quick is that 
I don't want you guys to think that I don't have my off days or I don't have bad days where I wake up and I don't want to do this or I wake up and I, you know, there have been months where I have not completed my steps to success and no one will ever know it. My downline, I'm very transparent with them and I do tell them when I, what my goals are and I do tell them if I don't meet them, but they'll never know if I have a bad day. Um, social media will never know that I have a bad day. I will not ever take a break from posting about this company because we are really just getting started. Um, so many people are like, we're saturated, we're saturated. I live in the state of Missouri where there's 11 ambassadors, 11 or 12, my last time I counted, and I still find people every single day that don't know about it works every single day at the pool at, you know wherever every single day and it's like to me every single year we have or every single month we have new people turning 18 we have new people graduating college I mean we are literally just we are just getting started and so what I want you guys to know is that it's okay if you you know, enroll, you know, if you don't com make or complete your steps to success, those are goals that you should have. But the only difference between me completing them each month and getting to ambassador and Deb getting to presidential is that we've talked to more people than you. And that is so true. It is the only difference between me and all of you guys on here because all of you guys are capable of being where I am. All of you guys but I talked to a heck of a lot of people and I sacrificed a lot because I put my blinders on and I went for it and so you've got to be willing to do that it is gonna take sacrifice to get you to the next level but I you know looking back I the whole year of Caroline going from two to three and a half really are such a blur to me but I wouldn't trade it for the world because now I'm home with her and I get, she literally dictates what we do. I mean, if, and I'm, if we want to go, she wants to go to the pool, we go to the pool. If she wants to lay around and watch cartoons, we lay around and watch cartoons. And, um, just the other day, it was about four weeks ago. Um, we were sitting at the bar and she looked at me and remember she's four. She doesn't really understand everything, but she was like, I have a question, mommy. And I was like, what? And she was like, why did where we used to live, why did I go to school all day long, but now I'm home with you all day? And I was like, well, because, you know, mommy's not a high school guidance counselor anymore. Mommy works for It Works. And, you know, we've been very blessed, babe. We've been very blessed. And she looked at me and she said, well, I don't ever want It Works to go away because I don't want you to ever have to go to work again. And I want to be an, I want to be a rat girl when I grow up. And right then and there, I was like, that was worth all the sweat and tears I put in for a year and a half to go to get to where I wanted to be. I mean, it was worth it. So you have to figure out where you want to go. If you don't want to go ambassador, that's fine. If you only want to go to triple, that's fine. But you can't let your foot off until you get there. You right. really can't. And if it takes you three, four years, it's okay. It really is. So you've sacrificed the good to get to the great, which they talk about yes. all the time. And that's so true. And there were times that I thought the same thing. Like I would be up late at night and I knew that I had to go to work in the morning and I would be so tired. And now I think, now I come and go. I, I pretty much vacationed the whole month of July. Life is awesome. And before I would have to be like so stressed and have to put in my vacation time and I sacrificed yeah. that good, those good things, and I've got great now, and I'm so thankful for it. Oh, you're yeah. such a doll. I just love you so much. I appreciate hey, it. I, I would love to answer some questions if people have questions. Like, yeah. I, I learned from when I used to have these calls with leaders, so if you have a question, I would love to answer it. Anyone? Anybody got a question you want to unmute and ask a question? She's the one to go to. Anybody? I have a question. Yeah. Um, okay, so when somebody tells you no, you said you don't give up on them, you don't ease up. It's not like you say, okay, goodbye. How do you follow up with that? Okay, I think it's different for every person. Like if it's a relationship, like an old friend or a family member or something. Um, but I just, I, I mean, literally, I just will follow up with them I not every week not even every month sometimes I wait a month and a half and I'm like hey we have BOGO wraps right now have you changed your mind or you 
you know, we just released a new product. You know, basically every time something big in the company happens, I am messaging every single person, every single person, whether they've told me yes, no, <clears throat> if they were an existing loyal customer, I mean, I'm messaging them. Um, but I literally, y'all, I mean, just the other day, I signed up a loyal customer that told me no for 22 months. No, 24 months. Yeah. Okay, so you don't follow up with them right away. So it's not like the next day or the message after you're no, like, no, 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 no. Okay. I wait a couple weeks. But they are on a list, and I am continuously liking their stuff on Facebook. I mean, that's the other thing. You've got to be intentional with the people that you're dealing with. And, like, if you forget, you just – I think it really, really boils down to you've got to find a system that works for you. You've got to remember who you want to talk to. You've got to add people every single day. You've got to be intentional with your time, and you've got to make sure you, you know – what their names are because otherwise they're going to fall. It's going to fall through the cracks. I promise you. So whether it's, you know, for me, when I first started, it was notebooks because I could just take my notebook to like the volleyball game or to my job because I was continuously writing down names. Um, but yeah, I had a girl in grad school that I was, have been working on and she just, or no, Caroline's babysitter last night just signed up as a distributor who I've been working on for two years. I mean, it's just like, you just never know when these people are going to give it a go. And you just never know when they're going to be ready. That's why you cannot stop following up. And, and literally, I followed up with her for two years messaging. Like when you said everybody has things happen, you know, big infertility, whatever it is, but you never know when that night might not be the trigger that says to them, I need to take this journey because of this thing that's happening. And I remember what post it was that Allie did. And the reason I think this is important is because this is why I tell my team to celebrate these small, small things. Um, the post that Allie made was she had just gone um, double diamond but she wasn't even talking about the paycheck. She was talking about how now she can um, go fill her gas tank up and she can just fill her gas tank up in cash from the wraps that she sold. And it's like, you're thinking in your head when you are think when, you know, when I was sitting there thinking, how are we ever going to get ahead? I was like, I mean, that's all she's doing. I mean, you know, I don't know. It just clicked for me. And so that's when I was like, if she can do this, I can do it, you know? And so like you say, you never know what post is going to trigger. You never know what, when you follow up with somebody and if you don't ask them and if you don't do those things and if you don't keep posting, it's for sure not going to happen. So you've got to make it, you've got to be, have a presence all the time. Um, Heather Martin, do you have a question? Unmute and ask your question. Heather. Hello. Heather, did you have a question? No? She must have changed her mind. Okay, anybody else? Questions? So you guys, I will say this too. In the history I've been with this company, they've never ran a promotion this long. So I hope you guys are taking advantage of it. I mean, they've run bonuses and stuff, but this this is an amazing promotion that um, you've got to think about the, how it's going to affect your volume next month when we have all these new distributors. So um, all I can say is use the time. If that means that you're staying up till 2 a.m., short-term sacrifices for the long-term goals that you have. So do what you need to do to sign up distributors and make a goal. Like mine, I always make attainable goals. My goal is four, and I've signed up two people. So I have two more people this week. And if I do more, that's great. But make a small goal and just go do it. And don't put any... Don't let any excuses get in your head. Don't let anything matter. Just go do it. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, hasn't she been great? I love you. So, I um, hope you got something out of it. But oh. I, y'all are awesome. Y'all are rock stars. And I really do hope that you just remember that whatever you want this company to give you, it will give you, but you have to allow it. Like you have to be open and allow it to work in your life. There's nothing about you that can be closed off to what this company um, can give you. And if that means having hard conversations with the people that you love, I mean, I've had distributors on my team whose husbands didn't really support them in the beginning, and they've just had to sit down and be like, this is what we're, I'm doing for our family. 
um, have those conversations because, you know, the people in your life that matter the most to you need to be on board with you and, and what your goals are for this company. And even though my husband has never officially worked this business, I mean, he does. He sends me customers and like all that, but he um, has always known what my goals are. Always. He knows the months that I'm going for triple or the months that I'm going for ambassador. So just let, let them a, a part of what you're doing. So good. Such All right. good information. All right. Go tend to your family. Thank you so oh, much. I'm Love not tending to my family tonight, girl. <laughs> my family's on their own this week. It is BOGO week. We're signing people up. I actually have another Zoom for my with my team. So, oh. bye, guys. I hope you guys have a great day or a great night. Thank you, love. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.